This is why I start early. <coughs> Camera's dead. Because I forgot earlier today, I did a little YouTube live. Pop in a new battery. See you in a minute. Comments. There they are. Hello, Randall Reese. How are you, my friend? Long time no see. One of the things I hate about this whole COVID deal is I don't get to see my friend as in. Uh, <laughs> I don't get to my, see my friends at coffee anymore. I used to see you fairly regularly at. Uh, wasn't Java, was it? Yeah, it was Java downtown. Okay, I got to go turn this camera on. See if it works. Okay. Mm. Well, this is kind of working. Switch to that one while I fix this so I don't get all crazy. Although some of you, I won't mention Robert Riddle's name. Are already crazy. Oh, did I mention Robert Riddle? Alright. <clears throat> okay, let's try this again. Oh, that's all right. Okay, it's a little bigger than it should be. We're going to leave it, though. B, I'm glad you got your garage fixed. That's cool. Oh, I don't know why I'm worried so much. I got... I have 11 minutes. I am scrambling, though. Get back and focus. <laughs> and you know what? I'm going to go to this one. <clears throat> okay. Sorry for the confusion. <laughs> Sorry for the confusion, everybody. Um, <clears throat> like I said, uh, normally I do a show on Tuesday and then on Thursday, and I often get the camera switched around in the middle, but it occurred to me about 20 minutes ago that I haven't set up the camera yet, so that's what I'm doing. I get to see a little behind the scenes stuff. I lost somebody. Well, I'm freezing up over here. That's not good. Freezing up everywhere. Really not good. Ooh. All right.
This is kind of like watching paint dry, isn't it? <coughs> sorry, everybody. Sorry, I'm uh, came in early. So you came in early. I appreciate you being here. So, B, will you come and clean mine? I'll tell you a story about my garage while we're here. Uh, I live, this house that, I, that I'm in currently, this stuff behind me, is the house I grew up in. So, I've been in this house, except for a little bit of time when I was first married. I've been here since the very beginning. Literally, I was born here, brought home from St. Luke's. So, as soon as I got old enough to start being responsible, my father says, David, you need to clean the garage. I wasn't very good at that sort of thing. In fact, I wasn't very good at uh, following chores and doing tasks. I had some other redeeming qualities, but getting the work done around the house was not one of my best. So here it is. I'm now 63, not 8. And uh, I still need to clean the garage. We're going to move probably in two or three months. I still haven't cleaned the garage. <laughs> so there's a quick sideline story. I'm not really good at cleaning the garage. I'm getting new garage doors, though, next week. So next Friday, maybe I'll show them to you. I'll show you my garage door. So there you go. So no, uh, I'm glad you're here, B, and I'm glad you, you've cleaned your garage. I have not. Not a good thing. <laughs> Aw, that's nice. Um, in that note, my son once told me, or not told me too long ago, so don't save anything that I'm going to have to throw out in 30 years. So that's pretty good advice, actually, if you're putting your stuff together. for. So, All right, B, we'll have to figure out a way to get that put together. I have an interesting show put together. I'm not, I don't have my, uh, I don't have... Uh, okay, hang on. I'll be right back. Hey, I'll get you a pretty picture to work on or look at while I'm fumbling around here. Be right back. How am I doing? Four minutes. Perfect. So normally I'd come on about now, but like I said, I had some details I needed to take care of. What do you think of those ponies? Aren't they pretty? Um, that's an image I call family. It is, it is uh, resin, or it is ink and resin on aluminum. So. 
was hanging in a gallery in Eagle. It didn't sell. So came home to me. And now I think it makes a very good background. This. Added titles to this. Again, of course, I need to thank Robert Riddle for doing the writing. Give us a little something to do when we hang out here. Float it down a little. Dance as good as the maybe former president. I and E L just went by. Mm. I like this intro. What do you guys think of it? This is a fun part. Watch the hills. Woo, woo. Hello, Zig. <laughs> uh, hello, Carol. How are you this evening? need to uh, bust loose your boyfriend and get him to uh, come on a road trip with me soon. Oh, you that's right. You don't like to call him your boyfriend. What do you call him? Your friend is a boy. Your friend. Uh, I'm not going to go any farther. All right. What do you say we, we go ahead and start it a little early? Seven. See if it works. It worked! Haha, <laughs> gentleman friend, I liked it. Well, hello, Facebook, YouTube, and all of the world. David or Day here. Tonight, we're going to talk about going with the flow and why, even if you do, you might just want to pick yourself up a paddle. And I have a big announcement. I've made some changes to uh, a couple of my projects. So let's get going. How was your week? Boy. Interesting times, uh, interesting time to be alive. It's fantastic. Um, I don't want to go into politics, but I do want to say something. The system worked. There was almost no fraud, as we can tell. Uh, we, we don't know. It doesn't look like the foreign actors were involved. Um, eventually, maybe slow, but eventually we're going to be able to count the ballots. We got lots and lots of, uh, a lot of people voted. And I really think that that is a true victory for democracy that even in the middle of this crazy pandemic so many people voted and it's wonderful right or wrong up and down the ballot it's fantastic thanks uh, to everybody that voted so no politics as usual but i just wanted to thank you thank you all everybody who voted out there um, it's uh it's been good so fantastic so uh um we were told, we've always told, go with the flow, take it easy, let it ride. Don't push the river was popular in the 70s. We all, we hear a lot about 
you know, be a mellow fellow. Well, it's been really easy with this COVID because we just don't know what's going to happen. It's just kind of easy to back up, take a step backwards, go and be mellow, hope that it's going to get better. And I've been doing that. I've been kind of in a pause situation. Um, as you know, I have a book project. The book is called Just Around the Bend. And uh, I've really struggled because normally I see lots of people hundreds, maybe even thousands, depending on the show. I would often do one or two shows, which means for me a show is where I go, I pop up my tent, I hang my artwork, I stand there for three hours, six hours, uh, sometimes as many as eight, and people come in and out of my booth, and it's fantastic, and I talk to lots of people. And then when I go out on the road, man, that's cool too, because I'll sit in a coffee shop, uh, often with a friend like, like my good friend Robert Riddle, and we'll talk, and we'll listen, and we'll hear stories, and uh, we'll... Uh, you know, we'll, we'll chat up the baristas at the table next to us, and I hear these fantastic stories about the locations that I'm at. Well, COVID stopped that. So I just kind of mellowed out, really tried hard to come up with a way to do something, and uh, I decided that I'm done waiting for COVID to get, get over. It's not going to be over anytime soon. Unfortunately, uh, it's time to make some plans for the way things are not hoping that they will be. So I'm going to go with the flow, but I'm going to grab a paddle. In fact, I might buy a rudder. I might even get myself a motorboat to flow down this river. It's time to make some changes. What do you think? Do you want to just go with the flow? Or are we going to go and we're going to be mellow? We're going to kind of hang out and just do the way, do things the way we've always done them? Um, I don't think so. So I'm not a really big spiritual person, but I have decided, oh, Carol, I am so sorry to hear that. Um, I, 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 uh, it took me off my stride. So I hope, uh, I hope that she gets better. Carol, here, I'm going to put this up. Well, no, I'm not. Um, <clears throat> so yes. It's time to be more active, more proactive to move forward and face the circumstances that we have, good or bad. Um, as Zig has said here, all things change. It's time for me, and I really believe for the rest of us, that we, we move forward. We get going. We look past what's happening, all the stuff that's happened this week and before, and the coronavirus and all of the negatives and we try to find a way to move forward and be more positive. As I said, um, I'm not a really, really, I'm not really a church person, but I consider myself really spiritual. So I decided that I would ask the universe, God, however you want to put it, um, to send me a creative solution to find a way for me to be more productive. I need a project. I need something to work for. I've been trying to literally push the river with this crazy book, trying to move it forward. Um, I've hired different editors. I've hired uh, different designers. I've talked to printers. Just nothing would work. So I have a big announcement. I I'm going to create a different book, completely different. Now, Just Around the Bend was a fantastic title. It had great images. I had lots of images put together. I had a few pretty good stories, some of which have been generated by the folks around here. But I don't have enough. I just don't have enough material to do a full-on, big-ass, wonderful, kick-ass coffee table book. Just don't have enough. So I asked for a solution. I, uh, I, I said... I set out an intention, um, call it an affirmation, however you want to look at it. Um, uh, you could certainly call it a prayer. I said, I need a different way to present my work. I'm proud of the work I do. I think it's pretty good. And uh, I've always thought that if I did it right, I could create a book that would be beautiful and people would like, like it and maybe even give me some money for it. Now, here's the thing. If you'll notice this, this river that I'm not pushing, that is the Snake River. Um, this is probably, by the way, Robert, you were right. I was wrong. Um, this is probably uh, 
150 miles from where it starts. Snake River is about 1,700 miles long. It starts in Wyoming. It starts, there's still a little discussion whether it actually starts in Yellowstone Park, but probably starts in Yellowstone Park. Park in Wyoming flows all the way through, flies obviously through Wyoming into uh, Idaho, mostly in Idaho, wiggles, well, maybe not even mostly, wiggles, great, great Snake River Plain, wiggles up, and it flows down into Washington and it joins the Columbia. It's a fantastic river, and some of my very, very best images are on the Snake River. This one is also the snake. In fact, I believe that this is almost certainly going to be something like this is going to be the cover. Well, you think that decision, you think that's a good idea for me to maybe switch around? Um, I am probably not going to write this book myself. Uh, I have a friend who also just came to me through serendipity. Um, her name is Robin Widener. Widener? Widener. Widener? Widener. And she, uh, she's fantastic as a, uh, uh, she's a very good writer and she likes this project and we're gonna see if we could make it work together. Um, <clears throat> I was struggling with the writing part. As you know, I'm really good at the visual. I'm not bad at telling stories, but creating my stories in such a, in such a way that it will create the right interest with the book, not so sure. We're not quite sure yet. We're just beginning to do the research. Um, I got the wrong camera. Sorry about that. Switch cameras there? No, maybe not. Never mind. Yeah, it is what it is. Apparently, it's not going to let me do. I'll have to do the. Eh, I don't know. Not sure where's what's going on. Well, okay, right camera. So. Uh, <laughs> For those of you who are regulars, and it looks like, uh, I don't know, I got eight people, uh, four of which are regulars. They've all regulars. <laughs> yeah, I still have a tech problem. So anyway, to make a long story short, um, one of the problems for the Snake River is that it is long. And you got to start with the start, right? So I looked, and it's roughly a 30-mile hike from pavement, a um, couple, maybe 1,500 feet up. <laughs> I do have a friend who really thinks he can do that. Um, it's just not going to be feasible because that's two days. So it'd be two days in, two days out. Um, we'd obviously, I'd have to take at least 30 pounds of gear. This friend would have to take a whole Subaru's worth of gear. Um, I don't think there's any way that either one of us or any of my normal photography friends would be able to make that hike and get back. So. Because, again, because the universe is turned around and because I've grabbed a paddle and I'm not just going to go with the flow, I'm going to actually make shit happen, I have a friend who has a commercial pilot's license. And if we help him cover the expenses, he will fly us over Yellowstone Park. So what do you think those images are going to look like? And... This spring, we we are also going to fly the Hell's Canyon in a little, I call them putt-putt airplanes, that's probably not the right word, but a little uh, six-seater uh, uh, commercial, uh, or not a commercial, it's a commercial pilot, commercial plane. I am so, uh, oh, looking forward to that. I think that will be fantastic. So folks, what do you think of that idea? Let me know. Um, if you have an idea, for a great name for a, a book about the Snake River, um, if you, if you have any great ideas, if you have any things about the snake that I really need to look at, um, if you know where I can get some pack mules, cause you know, I got a stable just down the street. I'll just, uh, no, I don't have a clue how one would get pack mules. And besides then I'd read then I'd been away like four hours, four days with pack mules. So, um, you know. Unless my friend Ziggy gets back to town and he brings his mule with him, I'm probably going to fly it. I think that's a great solution. And what's wonderful is because I'm now actively, I'm being proactively, I'm not just letting shit happen, I think that this project is going to come together. I may have already found a sponsor. I will give you more information about that. And I went to the bookstore. I'm going to close with this. Okay, I'm really going to try to get the right camera with me. Hang on a second. 
There we go. Okay, so if you look, this is a very everybody's every photographer's atlas should look like this. This you can't really tell. There we go. It's an Idaho atlas. Oh, pages and pages of the fantastic. Well, this is not working out at all. Anyway, if this is a beat up, ratty ass, wonderfully well used. I decided that it was time to upgrade. And look what I bought today. <laughs> a brand new Atlas. So, I'm ready. I'm going to be hitting the Snake River. I'm going to kick some butt and I'm going to create a fantastic book. And I hope that you all will uh, help me promote it. Help me maybe buy a co copy or two. I plan to have it read it for Christmas by next year. So I thank you all. I appreciate you so much. Um, I didn't do a show on Tuesday. I'm trying to get, I, I did, I'm actually did upload some stuff to YouTube today. I kind of maybe have that done. I will do a show in one place, maybe both on Tuesday back at uh, 930 in the morning on Tuesday. Unless of course I'm on the Snake River. And if I do, then I'll do it live from there. I sure appreciate you all, folks. I'm going to close. Carol, uh, get your drama me now. I'm going to close here with my video of us leaving. Again, thank you all. It's all in a day's work.